All righty, y'all. Um, happy Welting Wednesday. Today, we have a few pairs of Red Wings that we're going to be working on. I can't seem to find my knife. Um, probably should get everything set up before I start this one. Ooh. Oh, well. I can use this one. We have to, we have a couple pair of Red Wing boots we're working on. This one is a 81.96, and these ones are 45.86. We did, these were, these were pretty bad before. Like, the shape, I don't have any pictures of them. But, we did some, we did a leather condition, we cleaned them, oiled the, ins, the, the footbeds, the outsides. Man, this really sucks. Where is my... I'm trying to get to where I can... Skive down the sides. That way when... Because these are 360 going to be welted. So... I want to be able... It's just this knife is dull as crap. Oh, man. Alright, let me find my knife. I'll come back to you guys. Alright. I couldn't find my knife still, but I got another razor blade. This will work. It's so strange. I know I had it last night. And it was working. I just come in the morning and it's gone. So yeah, a couple pair of ramping boots. It is during the day right now. So we are, I might have to pause to help some customers or to go take care of a few things, but we are going to be doing this welting Wednesday on a Wednesday and not on a Thursday. Being proactive, proactive. It's actually Tuesday morning, I think. Yeah, Tuesday morning. But I gotta do that today so I can post it tomorrow morning on Wednesday. Makes sense. So these are gonna get natural color welts. So it's gonna have a nice contrast. Once they get done, they're gonna look real nice. For any of you cobblers out there that is watching and, I don't know if any cobblers watch and learn. I, so I act, not act. I've been doing this for three years now and I'm still learning every single day. Like I know the process of things, but it's refining my craft and getting better at those details that I'm practicing on. And I'm just kind of, I'm bringing you guys along to show you guys. So I appreciate your guys' patience. Also, running the business is not a, Easy, easy, easy task. I can't bring this around so that maybe you guys can see. We still gotta get a camera that'll show from down. I think that'll be the best angle. But yeah, I've been doing this for two years. I think on my last video, somebody asked me how I got into the, the trade. I've always liked working with my hands. In high school, I went to a, um, I think it was a private school. No, it wasn't a private school. It was a charter school. Um, because I didn't really like people or hanging out with kids. Just, I don't know, I just didn't fit, like, feel like I fit in. I wasn't wanting to do what they were all wanting to do. So most of the time at school, I would just sit by myself and listen to others, I guess. I mean, I wasn't a weirdo, creepy dude. Like, I had I had certain groups I would hang out with. But when I went to charter school, I only had school three days a week, two days a week, I think. And I would do all my work at the house. Because all the, the work was super easy. It just came naturally to me. I graduated with a 
straight A's, 4.0 GPA. But that's also because I took all the easy classes. Cause I, I just wanted to graduate and get the heck out of there. But anyway. So, uh, when I was in charter school, or I think it was a charter school. I can't remember. But I would get my homework done a lot faster. And a lot easier than... Um, so, I would have a lot of free time. And I ended up getting into knife making, like blade smith, blade smithing and blacksmithing. Like I don't know if you guys watch like uh, Forge and Fire. That show came out after I started doing that. But I was watching a lot of YouTube on knife making. Um, so that got I kind of slowly started doing that, saving up money for a forge and. A um, anvil. I bought a cheaper one from Harbor Freight. So I was doing that for a little bit. And then senior year, I went back to a um, public school. For, well, so the whole thing is we had to move out of town to help take care of my grandfather who had dementia. So when I moved out of my hometown, I just, I didn't want to deal with new kids, so I just went to charter school. But we moved back to my hometown, which is Visalia, California, Central Valley. Um, nowhere near the Bay. It's, so if you guys look up, I don't know if you guys know the Redwood Forest, Sequoia National Park. So the, the forest with like humongous trees big old trees um there's a little town called Visalia that you have to drive through to get to it and that's where i was born and raised it's like a it's a country agricultural town so we had a lot of farms i didn't have a lot of farms but there was a lot of farms that i grew up around with um but anyway i keep on getting sidetracked um, what was my point? What was I getting at? Ah, yes. So I moved back to my hometown, Visalia, California. Went back senior year, high school, and I ended up falling in love with this girl. I thought she was cute. Turns out she was my buddy's friend, and she thought I was cute too. So, I ended up. Long story short, we ended up talking and. I obviously, I had to, that's funny. So the first time I went over to her house, she wasn't there. And I knew that because she told me. She was like, my dad needs help with the backyard doing yard work. And this is right when COVID hit. So we were out of school. I was still working, but like at my normal job that I had, but I was taking time off to go work with her dad so I could, I don't know, win him over or see if I even so, so see if I liked the family, see if I liked her and see if I saw a potential um, but yeah, no, the first time I went over to her house she was at the business with her mom and I stayed at the house with her dad and did yard work all day which was fun I like doing yard work. I like, like I said, I like working with my hands and getting them dirty. I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty. Um, but yeah, no, they, they own the business. And so, eventually, I got, I hurt my back at my other job. And so, I wasn't able to work. And so, they offered me the job to come help at the shop. And so... Because I'm able to sit down, my, like I am now, my back doesn't hurt as much. And I could rest and do, and just sit down and sew boots all day if I wanted to. But, yeah. So, yeah, fast forward a couple of years, married her. And 
took over the business. We moved to Tennessee, so that's where we're at now. As you can see, we got a Tennessee flag in the back. So if you guys are near, we are in Smyrna, Tennessee. For you guys don't know who, where that is, it's about 20 minutes south of Nashville, I wanna say. South, yeah, south of Nashville. So if you're in the area, look us up, come check us out. These are turning out. I, I'm, I love it. I love, love, love when customers do the dark brown when they have dark brown or black boots and they do natural welts. I love the contrast. Which, by the way, I think I'm going to be doing. I'm gonna post this tomorrow morning, Wednesday, and then I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to post that video Thursday. Wednesday night. So I usually, because my videos are so long, they take so long to upload. So I usually post them before I go to bed. And in the mornings, they're they're good to go. So I think I'm going to post a, a video I did, a pair of Red Wing boots, on the last Welting Wednesday that you guys saw. I'm trying to get you a good angle here. Alright. So, the last video, I think I showed you guys those Red Wings that we did the lug soles on i'm gonna post that video wednesday night should be ready thursday morning god willing but i've been doing a lot of red wings lately a lot of red wings which is cool they're they're good boots they're a good brand so yeah this just like any other video, Welting Wednesday video, gotta take your time, stitch, follow every single stitch, make sure it goes in the same holes so that they don't, you don't change the shape or the size of the shoe, you don't want to tighten it, and you don't want to add more holes into the uppers, that would be a no no, no no. And you have bigger issues on your hands. I'm kind of out of words right now. I think it's because I'm tired. I stayed up to like one in the morning working on shoes. Working, my actually was helping my wife make a paperweight. We did um, a leather paperweight, which I know you guys think leather's light. She was able to carve out a channel and we inserted a metal rod, like a metal bar in between the two. And then glued them together and sanded it. And actually she did a, she engraved the company logo onto the metal, on the paperweight. So that was what we stayed up, stayed up all night doing. I think we did like, it was our, it was actually only took us two times. The first one we tried to stitch but it was just too thick and it wasn't lining up and it wasn't looking good. So we decided just to glue it together, which will hold just fine. I mean, for a paperweight, you're not gonna be flexing it. You're not gonna be, it's not gonna be put under a lot of stress. So the leather glue will hold just fine. But it was actually pretty cool. I mean, I don't have it on me now, but that, that bow tie, the, the little boot bow tie, my wife made that, so we have a a laser engraver. So when we do new soles and the edges, like this was this was a new this was a sole. We when we trimmed it, the excess she uses this leather to make and cut out little bolo ties, necklaces. That way they don't get thrown away. And that little bolo tie that she made, she she cut it out with the laser and did the engraving to make it look like a boot. So, she has other ones that are pretty cool. I'll put our little website down on the, down below in the description if you wanna go take a look at a couple things she's made and if you'd like to order some, or we could do custom ones too as well. And still, 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 still whining. Still whining. I know, last, the last video 
he was he was a lot worse but he's getting better i think i think our other dog that was in heat which is causing him to go bonkers is about done so we got to give a couple of days give her a bath so that scent is no more and he hopefully will calm down but he just I, honestly i also think it's because he wants to be around her just because they're friends I mean, because last night we, we laid down, she was she was in a kennel. No, no, she was laying down. We kind of pinned off a section of the room for her. And he just, he just he went over, looked at her, and laid down. And he stayed quiet the whole night. So, I mean, they, they spend almost all day with each other, roaming around the shop. So I can only imagine he's just really sad. And our other... Our other dog, English Bulldog, her name is Miss Potato. She's been kind of a espresso, espresso. She's been depressed. I was about to say espresso, espresso, or I don't know, it's a weird thing. But she's been depressed too, kind of, so. We will get them, we'll get her spayed here soon. So we don't have to worry about this. This one's taking a little bit longer than I, I thought. I think we'll go get some coffee. I'm about out of my first cup. But let me know if you guys would be interested in doing this live. Maybe I'll, I'll set a time Wednesday evening. Well, it can't be Wednesday evenings. I wish it could be Wednesday, Wednesday evenings. We have to leave the shop at 5.30, right as we close, because we got a Bible study that night. So we might have to Tuesday night, but it wouldn't be Welting Wednesday. I can't do a live session when I am have the shop open, because sometimes, man, it gets so busy. I don't have time to do any work. So that's the only time I get is when we close the shop. I guess I can do it in the mornings. Wednesday mornings, but who's gonna watch Wednesday mornings? Or it's got work, and I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what y'all think. If you would watch Wednesday mornings live, or just after you get off work, because, or maybe just move it, and we'll we'll nickname it Well to Wednesday on Tuesday. That'll be the name. I don't know. But these are coming out nice. It's kind of flared up a little bit. But once the once the the midsoles come down, you'll get it'll it'll flatten itself out. And it'll look real good. Coming around the I think I'm just gonna do this one pair for today because I've got a lot of shoes I gotta take care of. Work on. Try to get finished. I'm still trying to catch up, man. But I'm getting there. One pair at a time. I mean, the small jobs are easy. It's just these big jobs that take forever. And then there's only so many hours in the day. And most of those hours are taken up with customers at the front. I'm not complaining. A lot of work is better than no work. But yeah, I think I'm just gonna do this one for you guys today. And we'll call it a video. So, let's, let's talk about it. I gotta bring something up. This is gonna be entertaining for you guys. I can't imagine anybody who just like to watch someone so welt. That'd be entertaining. What do we want to talk about? What do I want to talk about? Let me know what you guys want me to talk about. I'll comment that down. Let's bring up some talking points, questions that you guys may have for me. I am 21 years old. Let's see. You all know I have a 
business in Tennessee. Do shoe repair, but also do a lot of bags and jackets. Um, let's see. What is there to talk about, man? I'm just drawing a blank this morning. Am I gonna be making shoes? That's a good question. I kind of want to when I have, if I have time, but I don't really know how. I, I know the process and I can kind of deconstruct a pair of shoes and reconstruct it. And that's kind of what I think I'm going to be doing. I think the first pair I'm gonna try to make these. These are old floor shimes. With the uh, suicide heels. It's actually a really nice pair of shoes. It's kind of a shame if I have, if I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna take those apart yet. Cause that's my, my, my idea is to take them apart, use them as templates to make a new one. But those are a nice pair. Those have been untouched and Cause there's a lot of old vintage floor shines that have been kind of butchered by cobblers. I don't know what they're doing. So I kind of think I might just want to, I don't know, resold that one as is, or I don't know. I'll see if I find another one that's not in the best of shape. So that one I could take apart and I won't be touching a A good quality shoe that that's been preserved because those are like made in 1970s 80s so they're i mean they're 30 40 years old and they're still in good shape and they're built to last that long so the new floor shines right now are just crap not worth anything I actually have a pair of Golden Harvest floor shines that came another day. That was, that's a, those are a pretty sought out shoe. Floor shine, Golden Harvest. It's like, um, there's different shades, but they're mainly like a yellow, tannish. Let me see if I can go find it for you. Here we are, these ones. See, they're kind of the same. Same style as these ones, the wingtips, but they're uh, yellow tannish. Um, they got the full soles. These haven't been touched before, so that's good. Uh, but they got these are these are why they called suicide heels. They got metal. This is a leather heel block, heel heel piece, heel be, heel piece, metal toplet or leather toplet. They put all those nails inside there, and this this little metal piece to help keep because I mean leather doesn't doesn't wear very well so you put all the metal pieces in there the nails and it helps keep them helps to keep the leather from wearing down but those ones are getting new welts leather midsoles leather soles we're doing rubber heels and then we're going to be doing these lulu tips on the back so it's gonna be kind of the same thing, but with a rubber heel, not this one, this is for something else, but we're gonna insert it like that. So it'll kind of look like this from that one. So you'll get the durability of the rubber while kind of still paying homage to how they were made. And the durability of the, of the, the steel, those are called Lulu tips. They're designed for the front of the sh other toes, like the fronts of the shoes, like this. You're supposed to countersink them into the leather sole. And that helps um, prevent your toes from wearing out prematurely. Some people, a lot of people drag their toes when they walk. So the toe, the front of the shoe, front of the sole gets worn out 
before the middle of the sole does. So people put those on to help keep them from wearing out as fast. And as long as you're not tiptoeing around, you don't you, you don't hear any of the, the clinking, the clacking. There we go. Sorry, I have to like move you guys around every single section of the shoe I get to. But we're going around the toes here, getting almost there, almost there. The toe and the heel is always the hardest part to get around. Because you don't want to pull it too tight where it's hugging the shoe. You want it to be able to fold down. But it's also got to be tight enough to where it doesn't, you don't see any of the, any of the stitching in between. It. Like when you pull the welt down, you don't want to see any of the brown threads. <clears throat> so. I love these shoes. These are so beautiful. I got a pair of them myself. I don't have them here at the house. But those ones are... They're a different shade of yellow, but they're just like... It's kind of hard to explain. I'll, I'll add some pictures to them, to the video. That way you guys can see... What mine look like. Now mine, back when I was first learning how to do... How to fix shoes. I didn't trust myself yet with a pair of such a, I guess you could call them rare and sought out shoes. So I sent them to another cobbler. I don't know if y'all watch them either. But most of you guys do because I see on the analytics of my videos it says your viewers also watch. And it's Steve at Vito's Leatherworks. He's a good guy. So I sent him over there. Like I said, back when I was a baby cobbler, <laughs> baby cobbler, I wasn't, I wasn't put in the oven yet because peach cobbler, it's okay. That was a bad, bad dad joke. I know. All right. I got to get that phone call. But yeah, back when I was a, a wee little baby cobbler, he did a beautiful, you guys. He's, a, he's expensive, but he does beautiful work. And he's been an inspiration of mine to do better work, to stand out, to, to kind of bring life back to this industry. Because in high school, before I met my wife, I didn't even know there was such a thing as shoe repairs. And from the stores I hear, there was like... 40 to 50 in each town here in the U.S. and now which is a rare rare thing all almost every single customer that, that comes in always says the same thing it's like wow we don't see you guys we don't there's no shoe repairs around anymore I'm happy you guys are here um, in other countries it's very popular still but here in the U.S. I'm I guess you could say the next generation of young cobblers trying to trying to grow and keep this trade alive because it's a, a very needed trade. We've entered into a, a throwaway society where you just throw away shoes when you're not when you're finished with them instead of getting them fixed. Which I mean, for some shoes they're made cheaply. I understand they're. They're not designed to be and not really worth repairing. But I mean, red wing boots and work boots, um, cowboy boots, you, you spend a lot of money on those. So you want, especially like stuff like this, like these, my goodness, there's, there's pairs that are like three to four hundred dollars used in that, con in this condition. So, and I mean, if you take care of them, they'll last you another 30 to 40 years, for sure. So, those nice quality pair of shoes, they're worth getting fixed. And they are, they're worth a 
And, and when you get them fixed, you want to make sure they look good and that they're done right. And unfortunately, a lot of cobblers have put us a bad reputation. And we've seen a lot of nightmare jobs. I've fixed a lot of bad jobs. So, I'm just trying to keep this industry, keep the family business going, and hopefully inspire others to possibly learn the trade and keep it going. That would be cool. Because there's a, a lot of cobblers out there that are retiring and selling their shops or just closing them. There's not gonna be very many of us left here soon. Which is only gonna drive up business. So, I'm just gonna keep on getting busier and busier. So we're hoping to, like I said, inspire other people to start and to do good work be proud of the job that they do. All right, so I'm gonna cut, before I get too far, I'm gonna cut the, this welt so that I can skive it. Skive is another word for tapering. You skive the leather, you taper it, so that when the two pieces come together, they are flush and they kind of overlap a little bit but it takes takes some practice i don't always get the beautiful at most the best transition but i do my best and it's a lot better than just buttoning them up butting the two up together because you get a crack well not a crack but you get the seam that, that forms And just I'll get I'll get better. I'll get better. It just takes practice. It takes practice. And you're gonna suck at everything the first time if you try it. But you gotta get past that that phase. With practice. See that one's not bad. See that's not too bad. I'll show you guys when I'm done. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on it though. Except I'm using my glue pot as a tripod it's a phone holder so that doesn't work and with these natural color welts they you cannot hide anything it's got to be flawless seamless or else you will tell camera together before moving forward. Oh, well, I got a customer coming in, so I'm gonna do this real quick. I'll, be good. I'll come back. Look what I framed. That's my knife. It was up front. Believe it or not. But yeah, this transition didn't turn out too bad. At least it's all one level. Or one size, one you know what I meant. So now it's a tricky part of trying to find up, find and line up the holes when the two pieces are glued together without having them come apart. Which I mean, I let it sit for five minutes because that's how long it took to help the customer, but. Oh, Wendy. I know, I know. I can't help you right now. I'm sorry, bud. I can't. I can't. I can't help you. I got your food. You got water. You're good. You're good. You're good. I know. I know. You want to sit up here with me. You want to sit up here with me. Want to say hi to the people? I know. You're a good boy. You're just a whiny butt right now. Oh, okay. Thank you. I know you want to see your friend. I know you might probably just want love right now is what you want. Sometimes I'll, I'll let him sit on my lap while I'm up here working on shoes. Well, obviously I can't work on shoes with him on my lap, but 
I'm carrying him like a baby and have him sit up on my lap. So coming here to the end. Last stitch. Last two stitches because they're going to go. I'm going to go. I like to go one across. Across? Across. Y'all say with a T or an S. Across or cross. Anyway, go across and then go back one. And then pull this outside loop to the inside. And that way, we have no threads on the outside. And I'll be able to tie the two together. Cut the excess. And hammer it down. Welted boot. And then the new soles come on. You have a nice contrast. I'll be posting a couple pictures of these to my Instagram. So if you want to follow me, I'll put that in the description below. There's that transition. When you put the, the new soles on, you'll be more really able to tell that that was there. Next step is going to put the pork midsole soles. And these boots are good to go. Thank you guys for watching and enduring this boredom. Andy, come here. Let's say hi to the people. Let's say bye to them. Oh, let's say bye to them. Let's say bye. Okay, I know. Say bye. You good boy. Thank you guys for watching. Um, stay tuned for that video. Hopefully, I'm going to shoot for a Thursday morning. Thursday morning, Wednesday night. I'll be posting this tomorrow morning. Yeah, tomorrow morning and then yeah so thank you guys for watching y'all have a wonderful day and god bless you happy wednesday all right just have a little bonus footage for you guys before i post this video these are the 8195s i was re-welting in the video i got vibram soles 700 and brown and that new welt I just, like I said, I love the natural color. These still got to be trimmed, but this is a solid, solid boot. These are going to be beautiful. And then the other one that I didn't show you guys re-welting, but they were in the video, 4586s. Same thing, natural leather welt. These ones we did, Vibram Christy soles. So these were turned out, these turned out pretty nice. But thank you guys for watching.